One of the things that we talked about when we were talking about the context for millennials was the speed of change. How, how quickly things change, whether it's social media platforms or, you know, aspects of our lives. I don't know what Snapchat lives. is. <laughs> yeah, who knows what Snapchat is, only if you're about 16, yeah. right? <laughs> Um, but, in the, but in a context where things change constantly, I think that there's a given that you don't assume you know everything, um, that, you're, that you don't assume that there's some like fixed certainty that's a certain way, and you're suspicious of any claims, anyone who makes that kind of claim. Um, and one of the other contexts that's important, when we think about uh, people who are young adults and we no longer assume either that they've gone to church at all or that they went to church regularly, like maybe they were a church-going family, but that meant you know they went four times a year or something. You can't assume that they know a lot about Christianity as it's practiced or as it's practiced in the United Church. Um, and so, a lot of the perceptions that we carry about what Christianity come, what Christianity is, comes from our news and comes from our representations and in television and in movies. And that tends to be a lot of literal, in, literal interpretation, creationism, uh, homophobia, um, absolute certainty, uh, interventionist understanding of God. Um, and these are by no means the widespread views held by Christianity, but they're what gets the most attention and therefore, what is easy for anyone who doesn't go to church every week to carry with them, and quite frankly, some people who go to church every week still carry it with them. So I, I think one of the things that's really important to establish quickly is, first of all, um, it's okay not to take the Bible literally and be Christian and to not assume that's the case. In fact, you know, most people here don't, or maybe everyone here doesn't, um, you know, there's more than one possible way to believe or to act, um, that there's lots of space for asking questions and that we're not making claims about certainty. We're saying our goal is to deeply engage those questions that are meaningful, to ask about what's really important in life and how we relate to each other and how we relate to the sacred. And this is a space where we can do that together, not say you have to believe these things or you have to do these things, but together we can seek the best way to live. Um, now, how do you do that in a, in a sermon? I mean, I'm, I, um, when I think I, I'm very clear about my theology with my congregation. I say, in my congregation, I have everything from someone who will say they pray and ask Jesus every day for what they should do to someone who sits in my pews and says they're not sure if they believe in God. And you can't be everything to everyone. So all I do is I make sure I'm clear about what my faith is, my personal, and I stand by it. But I also say, ask the question. Um, in my household, uh, the most famous Bible passage was not John 3.16. It was actually uh, 1 John. Beloved, do not believe the spirits, but test everything to see if they're of God. That's what I grew up learning. You test things to see if they hold up to your experience of God and of truth and of love. And if you have that, and that's what I keep in my mind, and I can still stand up and say, I believe in Jesus. I'm firmly with Jesus. I believe in a bodily resurrection. If you believe in a spiritual resurrection, that's okay. We can discuss that, but for me, it's this. And if you have that integrity, people are more, I think, willing and respect that when you are able to say your position with integrity, but not say, okay, I don't want to hear anything else. And that's what I've been keeping with me during my ministry.